The stories of Mahabharata retold by Shudipta Bhaumik. Welcome dear friends to another episode of The Stories of Mahabharata. In the last episode we heard about Duryodhan's recovery from a severe depression and his decision to perform the Vaishnava Yagna. One night, Yudhishthir had a strange dream. He saw he was standing amongst a herd of deer. The deer were crying and praying to him. They said, O oh king, we are the last few surviving deer of this Daitavana forest. Your mighty brothers have killed most of us for food. We pray to you to spare us and let our tribe grow. Yudhishthir woke up and felt pity for the deer in the forest. Since the Pandavas arrived, they have been hunting deer for their meat. But Yudhishthi didn't realize that due to their prolonged stay in this forest, the dwindling deer population is on the verge of extinction. He called his brothers and told them about his dream. He said, We have one year and eight more months to live in the forest, and deer meat is what we need to survive. So I have decided to leave Daitavana and spare the deer in this forest. We would go back to Kamyakavan and spend the rest of our exile there. Kamyakavan has a large deer population and should be enough to sustain us for the period. The Pandavas moved back to the Kamyaka forest and built their hermitage. After completing their 11th year, one day, the great Rishi Vyasa visited them. After the customary greetings, the Pandavas gathered round him to listen to his wisdom. Vyasa then narrated the story of Rishi Mudgal. In Kurukshetra lived a sage named Mudgal. He followed a severe path of penance and asceticism. He wouldn't consume anything that wasn't necessary for minimal sustenance for himself and his family. Just like a bird, he would collect and eat the grains left in the fields after harvesting, and that too only once every 15 days. On full moon and new moon days, he would perform the fire sacrifice while his wife would cook the grains in a magic pot. He would then feed his guests first and refused nobody who came for a meal. He had no shortage of food for his guests, for the remaining food in his magic pot would increase whenever a guest arrived. After the guests had their full, Mudgal would eat whatever was left in the pot. One day, when Mudgal was preparing his fortnightly meal, the great sage Durbasa arrived. Durvasa was known for his ill temper and his tendency to curse anyone who would displease him due to any reason. People tried to avoid him at any cost. Durvasa, with his head shaven and no clothes on, arrived shouting and yelling like a madman. He hurled nasty insults at whoever crossed his path. He stood in front of Mudgal and said, I am hungry, where is my food? Mudgal served Durvasa with all he had in the pot. Durvasa ate everything and when he was full, he scraped off the remaining food from the pot, smeared it on his body and left. Nothing was left for Mudgal and his family. After 15 days, Durvasa came again to Mudgal and did the same thing. Mudgal went hungry again. 
for six consecutive full moons and new moons. Durvasa tortured Mudgal by leaving no food for him to eat. But Mudgal didn't complain. Durvasa was astounded by Mudgal's patience and virtue. He said, Mudgal, you have proved yourself to be a selfless man and a true giver. I am impressed with your sacrifice. Words of praise about your patience and generosity have reached the heavens. You have earned the privilege of going to the heavens alive. Soon, a fantastic airship arrived at Mudgal's hermitage. An angel stepped out of the ship and said, O oh great sage, I have come to take you to the heavens. Please, step into this chariot and I'll take you there. However, Mudgal was not so keen on boarding the craft. He asked, Dear angel, I am glad that the gods have been kind enough to invite me to the heavens. But before I board your ship, tell me, what are the advantages and disadvantages of going to the heavens? The angel was taken aback. He had never heard a weird question like this before. It is rare for a mortal human being to go to the heavens alive. Who would ask for its advantages and disadvantages? Still, he said, Only those who are virtuous and selfless donors, those who have mastered their senses and their desires, and those killed in wars, can go to the heavens. In the heavens there is no pain, only happiness exists. Once in heaven, you won't have any feelings of sorrow and greed. You won't have any feelings of jealousy or hatred. You won't feel tired and your hurt would always be filled with joy. You will live in eternal peace. These are the advantages of the heavens. But it has disadvantages too. In the heavens, you can enjoy the fruits of your good karma, but you won't gain any new karma. So, for example, if the riches and facilities of some other inhabitant cause negative feelings in you, you might lose your karma. Losing your karma can cause you to fall from the heavens back to the earth. Mudgal, with folded palms, said, Dear angel, please go back to the heavens. I do not want the pleasures of the heavens. I seek that state of existence where men are not only free of pain and sorrow, but they also don't have to fear about coming back to this wretched human life. After the angel left for the heavens, Mudgal began his search through the practice of knowledge. After many years of arduous meditation and research, he attained nirvana, the state of ultimate freedom from the cycle of birth and death. While the Pandavas were spending their final year of exile in the Kamyaka forest, Rishi Durvasa landed in Hastinapur with 10,000 of his disciples. He went to Duryodhan and said, My son, I want to be a guest in your palace. I hope you have no problem with that. Duryodhan was well aware of Durvasa's temper. He knew if he said or did anything to displease him, Durvasa would punish him with some horrible curse. On the other hand, if he could please the powerful Rishi, the Rishi might award him with a boon. He welcomed Rishi and said, O oh great Rishi, we are honoured to have you as our guest. Please feel at home and let us know how we can serve you. Durvasa and his disciples settled down in the palace. Duryodhan instructed the servants and staff of the palace to ensure that the Rishi had nothing to complain. 
whatever the rishi asks for must be provided without delay durvasa and his disciples exploited duryodhan's hospitality to the fullest sometimes durvasa would say i am hungry i must get my lunch as soon as i return from my bath in the river he would then leave the palace while the servants and cooks would hurry to prepare his meal but then he would not return till late in the evening and go to bed sometimes he would say i am not hungry so don't arrange for my meal then moments later he would say bring my food i am starving sometimes he would wake up in the middle of the night and ask for his meals duryodhan and his staff were tired of rishi durvasa's whims and demands still duryodhan and his staff served him without losing their patience few days later durvasa called duryodhan and said my son it is time for me to leave i am pleased with your hospitality and would like to grant you a wish ask what do you want duryodhan was expecting such an offer and had planned for this moment with his partners in crime karna the sarshan and shakuni he said o oh, great rishi if you would like to grant me a wish i would like to request you to go to the kamika forest and be the guest of my brother yudhishthir i would also request you to arrive at their hermitage after draupadi had her meal durvas agreed within a few days durvasa with his 10000 disciples arrived in kamyaka forest and knocked on yudhishthir's door yudhishthir and his brothers were having their afternoon siesta after a heavy meal cooked by draupadi yudhishthir woke up and opened the door durvasa said dear yudhishthir we are here to stay with you as your guest for a few days and rest a little do you mind Yudhishthir was flabbergasted. He said, "Oh, great Rishi, we consider ourselves fortunate to have you as our guest. It is a great honor. Please come in and let me know how can I serve you." Durvasa said, "We are hungry. Please arrange for our meals while we take a dip in the river." The Rishi then left with his disciples to bathe. Yudhishthir went to Draupadi and informed her about their guest. Draupadi was shocked to hear this. Few moments ago she had finished her meal and the magic pot given by the sun god was now empty. She couldn't cook anything in that pot today. How would she serve her guests? What would she serve? She knew if the ill-tempered Rishi Durvasa didn't find a hot meal ready for him when he returns, he would be mad with rage and would punish them with a terrible curse left with no option draupadi prayed to krishna oh lord please save us from this terrible crisis you saved me once from that brute to the sarshan now save me from durvasa within moments draupadi found krishna standing next to her he smiled at her and said draupadi here i am but before you say anything give me some food i'm starving draupadi was in tears she said i'm sorry krishna i have nothing to offer you the divine pot contains food as long as i don't eat but after my meal the pot becomes empty i have finished my meal and the pot doesn't have a single grain left in it krishna said you must be kidding i don't believe you bring the pot and show it to me draupadi went to the kitchen and brought back the pot krishna looked inside and after a thorough search he picked up something from one corner of the pot here is a grain he said it has a little bit of vegetable with it too he put the grain in his mouth and chewed it with great pleasure before swallowing it ah i am full i feel much better now krishna called sahadev and said go and fetch the rishis for their meal 
Sahadev was puzzled. He couldn't figure out what meal they would serve Durvasa and his disciples. But he didn't question Krishna's intention and left to call the rishis. In the meantime, Durvasa and his clan were taking their bath in the river. Suddenly, they felt bloated and full, as if they have had a huge meal. Loud burps came out of their mouth and they looked at each other in surprise. A few moments ago, they were suffering from extreme hunger and now they feel full and satiated. How could this happen? One of the disciples looked at Durvasa and said, Rishi, we feel as if we had a big meal. How can we go back to Yudhishthir's ashram and eat? Durvasa massaged his belly and said, Oh no, we committed a grave mistake by asking Yudhishthir to prepare our meal for no reason. Now if we go back to him and refuse to eat, they would be offended and the virtuous king would curse us. I suggest we should flee the forest and never come here again. When Sahadev came to the river bank, the rishis were all gone. But the Pandavas couldn't relax. They were worried that Rishi Durvasa might come back in the middle of the night and ask for food. Krishna assured them and said, Don't worry about Durvasa. He has left for good and would never come back to bother you. The five brothers and Draupadi bowed to Krishna and said, O oh Lord, just as a raft saves a drowning man, you have saved us from this unforeseen crisis. How can we ever thank you? Krishna smiled and said, I am your friend. Call me whenever you need me. Saying so, he disappeared. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bamek. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.